All right. Well, um, we are recording. Um, I'm Rachel Osira, District Rotary Foundation Chair. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar this evening on District Grants um, Program for 2021-2022. And uh, we're going to go ahead and um, have a presentation. And again, if you uh, would put your name, your uh, club name and your email address in the chat, I'd really appreciate it. And any questions that you have, please put them in the Q&A or raise your hand. And I'll stop at the end of each section, um, check for any questions, and then move on. And then we'll have some time at the end as well um, for individuals to unmute and, and ask questions. So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, screen sharing, and uh, we'll go back um, to the whoops again here. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, this presentation here is also available on the district website on the um, grants page. And I just want to let everyone know that I have an identical session next week, and after that session is held, there will be a follow-up email that will go out to all the participants with um, a link to the presentation, as well as um, some additional uh, helpful materials. So that will uh, all be coming to you, but it is on the district website grants page right now. So our ob objectives tonight are to review how the annual fund share system works, how clubs become eligible for district grants, uh, the district grants program for 2021-22, the grant management and stewardship requirements, and then how to use the matchinggrants.org website to apply for, manage, and report your district grants. So it's it's um, really a how-to kind of a hands-on type of webinar tonight. So um, just want to make sure that everyone is aware of our district grant subcommittee. Uh, this group of folks, um, and it, it's quite a big group, is available to um, help and assist um, uh, anyone in our district with you know, questions about grants and grant applications. Um, Pedro Savalos is the chair of the committee. I'm the District Rotary Foundation chair. And Sue Lynn is our district grants coordinator. And if you're a president elect, um, you should have received an email from Sue recently. If you're a president or currently involved with district grants, you've also probably had some follow-up emails from Sue about the grants that you're currently working on. So we want the first thing we want to do is just review how the annual fund share system works. So the annual fund is the fund of the Rotary Foundation that supports our service projects, both locally and globally. So when we give to the annual fund, um, we are investing in our ability to do um, district grants and our global grants. So there's a share system. The annual fund share system works this way. When uh, funds are donated to the annual fund, they're invested for three years. And then the principal comes back and half of it goes to the district as district designated funds. And the other half goes to the world fund. Uh, the, the funds in the world fund are used to um, match uh, global grants, other use for peace center um, investments and uh, in other um, uh, needs that the trustees see fit. The monies that come back to the district, district designated funds are available for the district to use as um, for, for a district grant or for global grants. So um, the district can use up to half of the funds that come back um, to the district for a district grant. So this is um, uh, just a, a, a diagram uh, showing what, what I had, had just explained. So if, for example, $1,000 is given as a gift to the foundation, those $1,000 are invested for three years, that principal comes back, $500 would go to the World Fund, $500 would come to the district as DDF or district designated funds, and then we can make up to half of that or $250 available for our global, our district grants program. So um, 
I'm just going to define, you know, briefly what a district grant is as opposed to a global grant, because tonight we are strictly focused on district grants. So those are those smaller scale short term projects. The activity can be local or it can be international and it has to align with the foundation's mission. Um, and the district grant is awarded annually. So uh, once a year, the district applies for a, a block district grant that's made up of, of sub grants, but we're only able to do it once a year. And we have to, um, it can't be funded until the new rotary year starts and we cannot apply for the, the district grant until the previous year's district grant is closed. So that's why there's a lot of timelines that are really critical. So, so one of the things about the program is you know, meeting all of the deadlines so that we can have a, a district grant for our district. So now we're gonna um, get down into detail about our district grants program, District 6450. So the way that we do it in, in our district is um, every year, each Rotary Club that's in good standing with the district is eligible to apply for one or more district grants for a qualified activity that supports the mission of the Rotary Foundation. So, um, you know, there's the mission, basically, um, you know, anything that is, fulfills a, you know, humanitarian um, need to improve um, peace, health, education, or the alleviation of poverty. And we'll get into um, what type of activities district, our district grants program can support and which, what type they don't. But it's not as restricted as a global grant. So our philosophy in District 6450 is to allocate the maximum amount of dollars that we're able to to the district grants program every year to be used by our club. So we can allocate um, up to 25% or, or half of what we get back um, to the to, to district grants, and that's exactly what we do. So what we do is we notify the clubs. Um, uh, they basically you know, are allocated based on what they gave uh, three years prior. So they're allocated 25% of what they gave three years ago to the annual fund. And that's um, what, what their allocation is. It, it, it's based on what they or their members had donated. So this year we have, this coming year, we will have $65,813 available coming back to the district as new district designated funds. I'm sorry, we, we, we have twice that amount. We'll have um, 65,813 available for the district grants program. So that is 25% of what we donated to the annual fund three years ago. And that has um, been allocated to the clubs. So this year, um, the clubs can choose to use their allocated funds for uh, one of three different choices. They can use it in the um, district grants program, preparing a district grant, and we have something new this year. There's no matching funds required from the club. In the past, we had required the clubs to match um, the, the money, the allocation um, from the district, the, the district grant money, 100% uh, at least, unless it was a COVID-19 project. Um, this year, we have waived the matching requirements, so that, that is not required. Um, or the club can use the funds to match their Polio Plus contributions. The district would hold on to it as DDF or district designated funds. And at whatever point the club had on its own had donated an equivalent amount or more to the Polio Plus fund, the district would, would donate um, the DDF you know, on the club's behalf, which would then be matched 50% by the World Fund. And then those monies would be matched two for one by the Gates Foundation. So it, it's, a, it's a great way to use your district grant funds um, if you prefer not to do a project. Another option is to tag the funds for global grant 
district designated funds. Clubs that do uh, are active in global grants um, very may, well may want to pursue this option. It's very valuable because those funds are matched in a global grant application by the World Fund 80% um, starting July 1st. It's currently 100%, it'll become 80%. So the district would hold on to those funds and would be tagged. And when you are, um, when you submit a global grant or you support someone else's global grant, you can um, access those district designated funds. The rest of the time tonight, we're going to be talking strictly about option one, which are the district grants. You know, how do you do that and what is the program? So to apply um, for a district grant or use your, your district grant allocation, the club has to be in good standing. Uh, that means that your Rotary International and district dues have to be up to date. And then the club president or currently the president elect needs to have set goals in Club Central for membership, annual fund and polio plus giving. Also, there has to be a club foundation chair identified for the club and entered into Club Central. And then there can't be any late district grant or global grant, grant reports that are outstanding. So th these are very basic things, um, should be easy to achieve, but they are criteria for receiving your district grant allocation. We actually had a club this year that um, did not meet the criteria and still haven't met the criteria and they have not received their, the district grant funds that would have been allocated to them. So we're quite serious about this. Um, so this year, the district grant program, uh, the deadline is June 1st for submitting the district grant application. It should be submitted by the president elect or their designee. And the um, president elects received a personal email about the district grant application in early March from Sue Lynn. Um, all of the assistant governors, you know, for, for the, each club were, were copied on that email as well. If for some reason um, you're a president elect and you haven't received that, um, please just put a note in the chat. Um, we've tried to follow up with everyone at PETS. I had asked people who hadn't received it to let me know, then I have forwarded it to them, but we want to make sure everyone gets that email. It has the program details, their specific allocation, and again, the, the choices that we just went through. I am just going to stop and see if there are any questions, and I don't see any, so I'm going to keep going. So the program rules. Um, all district grant applications and reporting must be submitted online through the matchinggrants.org website, and we're going to go through that tonight. Uh, it has to be done that way, um, it's, and it's, it's quite easy to do. The district grant subcommittee will then review all of the applications submitted as they're received. So as they come in, we'll be reviewing them. And if there's any questions, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you to clarify. And then the acceptable applications will be collated into um, really one block uh, district grant that will be submitted to the Rotary Foundation for final approval and for distribution of funds. We cannot submit the district grant application for the new year until the previous year's district grant application, application project is closed by the Rotary Foundation. So we are currently you know, contacting everyone who um, has a district grant but hasn't submitted their re final report yet, reminding them to get those in on time because if they don't, then that delays the timing of us um, submitting next year's district grant application to the Rotary Foundation and it delays the checks coming out. And when the project is finished, the clubs must complete and submit a final report with um, appropriate receipts and proof of payment. So there's um, documentation that is required. Any changes to the grant uh, application or the grant project have to be approved by the district grant subcommittee and the Rotary Foundation in advance. We are actually required to 
submit change requests to the Rotary Foundation. They're um, very quick about getting back to us, but if you do have a change in scope or a change in the project, um, please do reach out as soon as possible and let us know. The projects cannot begin before July 1st. There can be no spending that starts before July 1st. We do need proof of payment of all spending. And if there are any receipts or proof of payment that predate July 1st, um, they, they won't be eligible for um, coverage by the grant funds. It's just, there's no exceptions to that. Um, except last year it was allowed for COVID-19. There was pre-spending. That is not the case anymore. So it cannot be done before July, begin before July 1st. And the projects must be completed no later than May 31st of next year so that we have time to do the reporting and get the grant closed. But, but actually we would like to get the final reports within 30 days of the project ending date. And again, um, if a club doesn't get their final report um, in, then they're not gonna be eligible in the coming year. Now I did see there was a question, so I'm gonna stop and take a look. Let's see. I'm trying to get the Q&A to come up and I'm not able to see it. Um, not sure why, but um, And just see, try one more time to get that Q and A. Hmm. I see there are questions, but I will not let me open them. I'm gonna stop sharing for just a moment and check the questions. Okay, um, uh, there's a question about an MOU require, required document. Um, MOUs are not required for district grant participation. Uh, that's a question from Joanne Ragonia. So we will be discussing that with, with our global grants um, seminar. And uh, that says there's a question in the chat box. Um, which I'll, I'll take a look at in just a moment. And um, there's a question from Marion from Naperville. If one club in the district is late in submission, does it impact the entire district? And the answer is yes. You know, we cannot um, close out the district grant with the Rotary Foundation if a club, any club, doesn't complete their district grant report. So it's, it's absolutely critical. Everybody is, is affected by that. Um, I'm going to close that out. I'll take a look at the chat box here and just see. Okay, Deborah uh, Willage. Okay, I see your, your comment about not getting an, um, the application. I will follow up on that. I'm just scanning to see if there's any other questions. I don't see any, so I'm going to go back to screen sharing and jump back in there. Not sure why I couldn't see those questions, but uh, um, okay. So we want to um, take a look at what's allowed and what's not allowed uh, for district grants. So um, programs like scholarships are allowed, but pay attention to, to the timing. Sometimes it can be difficult to get those, uh, get the spending on those completed by May 31st. So make sure that you can. Um, some of the expenses related to, to global grant development are eligible for district grants coverage. So travel related to global grants, community needs assessments. If you're doing a water project and you need um, a water survey done um, that can be um, covered by a district grant. Uh, support of other organizations is eligible if there's hands-on Rotarian involvement, no check writing. We did allow check writing during COVID-19, 
um, just because of restrictions in you know being able to uh, to get together and do things, but um, that is no longer the case. There has to be hands-on Rotarian involvement if you're involved with supporting another organization. Vocational training teams are eligible, um, Youth Exchange, RILA, uh, the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards are, are all eligible for district grant support. Um, all kinds of projects, local projects, you know, in the community. Some examples are given here, playground repairs, children's activities. You know, we had a big program this last year for district grants on early childhood education, for example, um, backpack meal, uh, meal support programs, um, holiday or special event meals, holiday, you know, gifts uh, for, um, for, for, you know, for schools, for kids, um, community events, uh, dictionary projects, you know, mental health, you know, all, all kinds of, of projects um, in the community that, that fit the mission of the Rotary Foundation are eligible. Um, the things that are not, as I mentioned a little while ago, is just check writing, where you're writing a check and there's no, you know, hands-on Rotarian engagement that is not eligible. Um, purchasing promotional, you know, Rotary promotional materials, uh, for ourselves is, is obviously not eligible or rotary sponsored events and fundraisers are not. Um, salaries or operating expense um, coverage for other organizations are not. Projects that are already completed are not eligible for a district grant. The spending has to begin July 1st or establishment of a fund, just putting money into a fund would not be eligible. So I'm going to pause here and just check and see if there were any additional questions. And I, I see that there aren't. So um, we're now going to go into the, the actual, um, you know, how, how do you do the grant application on the matchinggrant.org website. And we're going to go through slides here, but I'll have a chance to, when we get through this, to actually go live you know, onto the matchinggrants.org website and, and we can take a look there. So uh, this, this is the landing page of the website. There's a global grant section and the district grant section. Um, we're gonna be using the district grant section. So that's where we will focus. Um, when I go into the district grant section, this is, this is what I see. Um, most of you won't see this. You'll only see projects that your club um, uh, has entered in here. But you see there's, there's a list with, they're given a project number, the title, country, location, district, the club, the amount, and the status. Each project has um, a series of tabs. So this is the um, description tab. And th this is already a project that's been created. So you see the project description, um, you know, basic information, the budget, a description of the project, um, who the primary contact is. This is almost always, this is the person, you know, creating the grant application. It's um, typically the, the president elect or whoever they designate uh, to do so. And then what the project status is. And I, I see that there's a question. Um, I will, I'm gonna go through a couple of more slides and then I will um, stop screen sharing and, and pull up the questions. Um, the documents tab is a place where documents can be attached to the, to the project um, folder. So there's um, a final report, the documentation, um, about proofs of payment, uh, you know, other, other important information can be provided here in the administration mode. And then there's a photos tab where photos can also be uploaded while in the administration mode. There's, there's two modes, there's project mode and there's administration mode. You see a little um, tab over here, administration. When you, when you press that, it goes into administration mode and allows you to to, to enter information. So I just want to cover roles. So, so the system has us set up roles and roles are assigned to individuals for a specific rotary year. So we've um, gone in and, 
and um, identified who all the club presidents will be, you know, for each club for the coming year, the assistant governors, um, as well as, as some additional roles. Um, primary contacts are identified when each application is created and they receive all of the emails related to the grant. Uh, and they have access to prepare the final reports and there's additional contacts that can also be added to receive emails. Club presidents and assistant governors also receive copies of all the emails that the system generates related to the grants. So um, I'm going to stop sharing and um, just check the questions here. Uh, good, good question from Deborah. Um, can the can you do more than one project for one year? Yes. Um, oh, can you do the project for more than one year? The project has to end, but you can do the same project again the coming year. But the project has to begin and end within a rotary year. The spending has to be completed and a final report has to be done. Um, but you could do that project again, or you can do another phase of that project you know, in, in the next rotary year, but, you know, each, but there has to be um, a beginning and an end within, within a go, given rotary year to some, to some um, definable phase of a project. I hope that answered the, the question. Um, and you can also do more than one district grant. You know, you, you have your allocation amount and you can do several grants depending on, on how many, on, on how many dollars that you have. So um, when you are identified for a role, you will automatically receive a welcome email. Um, or if you go onto the website and just, you know, ask um, to uh, ask, ask for access, um, you will also get a welcome email. So anyone who's new to district grants and you're a president elect um, should have received a welcome email like this that takes you to the login page and you can set up a password after you log in. Uh, a lot of times they go to a spam or a junk folder so you, you could check there. And if for some reason you didn't get it, you can just go to the landing page matchinggrants.org and initiate the process your, yourself there. Um, that'll work as well. So um, there's these nine different project status. There is a help screen. So this is all from the help screen. And as the district grant goes through these different stages, the project status will, upstate, up, will be updated and changed. So the first phase is proposed. So when you go in and create a grant and uh, application and save it the first time, it has a status of proposed. And then it moves to looking for funding if you don't, um, if the budget doesn't balance. Usually when you enter it, you'll balance the budget right away and that phase won't happen. And it'll just go right to fully pledged. And then it'll ask you if you wanna submit. And then um, once you say yes, it'll then um, ask for signatures. And once it's signed, it'll, the status will be signed. And then the district grants committee will take a look at it and if everything looks okay, we'll go in and we'll approve it. And then um, once, and it'll stay in the approved stage for a while. And then once we submit, the district submits the big block grant to the Rotary Foundation and the Rotary Foundation approves it, um, checks will then be cut. And if you are in good standing, your check will be mailed out and the district treasurer will change that to paid. Um, this last year, we got those checks sent out in August. So that's what we hope to do again is to, you know, have that done by um, late July, early August. And then um, when the project is completed and you fill out the um, final report and documentation and upload that, then you'll change the status to reported. And it comes back to the district grants committee stewardship team to review it. And once they're satisfied, 
um, and they say everything's okay, we go in and we close it out. And if, or if there's any questions, we, we come back and we ask. So those are the, the different statuses. And the final tab is the history log tab. And you can see from here, you know, it logs all of the status updates as, as it goes through. And you can go in and you can look and see all the different phases that the project has gone through and when, or if, if anyone wants to enter a note, um, uh, they, they can enter a note um, into the history log as well, an important note. And then, as we said before, the final reports are due within 30 days of the project completion. The final report forms are downloaded um, from the, the grant website. You would uh, go into the administration mode of the project administration mode of the um, project folder, go to the description tab, and it will download the form. Um, it's a Word document, it'll download the template to your computer, you fill it in, and then you go back and upload it as a, a PDF in the documents section. And it really walks, walks you through the process, but we'll go into the website live um, ap after we get through the, um, the slides. So what you need to do this year, each club is responsible for creating the um, grant applications themselves, submitting and signing them. Um, they come to the district grant committee for approval. Again, the deadline is June 1st, and we're here to help. Um, if you have any questions at all, um, you can reach out to, to me or to Sue Lynn, um, and, and we'll help you through the process. After the grant has been approved by the district grants committee, um, the, the project will change to approved status. And then again, once it gets paid, it'll become um, paid status. So, um, and then when you have the project, when the project's underway, make sure you get the check, you know, complete the project. And then within 30 days after it's completed, you know, again, prepare and submit that final report and documents and the committee will review those um, and close out the projects, the project. If for some reason the documentation is incomplete, we will, you know, communicate back. And if something's missing, we'll have to change the status back to paid status so the documents can be uploaded, resubmit, and then closed out. So um, take a look at what we do to actually get started. Uh, the president-elect should determine who the primary contact will be for creating the grant application, whether it's themselves or whether they designate somebody else. Some, uh, some clubs uh, like Aurora, um, their treasurer, uh, Kathy, um, always does it. Uh, but, you know, each, each situation is unique. And as we said before, you know, the account will be created automatically the first time you log in. So, um, and then you want to go into the district grant section when you log in right here. And this is what it looks like. Um, so when you, the primary contact logs in, you would click right up here. You see this blue arrow, submit project. That's where you go. And this is what you get. You'll get um, a web form to fill in. You want to make sure you select the 21-22 rotary year put in a title, the country, location, area, focus. There's a menu selection of activity types, a project summary, describe the project, the district number, your rotary club, um, your contact name and email. And then you put in the budget, um, how much DDF, how much of your allocation you're using for this project. It might be all of it. Or if you're doing more than one project, it'll just be a portion of it. If the club is putting in any funds, you can identify those as well. And then the total, it, it needs, to, needs to add up. Um, want the contact phone number, who the check should be made payable to, that's important that our treasurer looks at that. That's where we get the information for cutting the checks. The mailing address um, as well, where the, where the check should be sent to. And then check the box. And when you check that box, saying it meets the guidelines of the Rotary Foundation and you're happy with it, you would go ahead and save it. And that's, that's the first step. Um, 
and you're on your way. We ask, even though there's no field for it, that you put in the, the um, write up somewhere your target completion date that helps us know, you know, when you expect the project um, to be complete so that we can, you know, monitor and, and make sure that the reporting gets done on time. It's really hard if everybody sends their reports at the same time, we, we get um, backlogged. So we want you to, um, you know, let us know when you expect the project to be complete and then file a report soon after that. Okay, so again, getting started. Um, once the primary contact enters all the information into the, um, into the online form and saves it, the project status will change to fully pledged and you'll be in the administration mode. Um, there'll be that little button over up on the right to go into the administration mode. The next step would be for the president elect to electronically sign off. And that's done by clicking the start signature process button on the administration page. Um, and then it goes to a page where you can select signatories. These are the people who would digitally sign off on, on the grant. I would strongly recommend that, um, that only the primary contact be selected. If you have a lot of people selected as signatories, it can be very hard sometimes to actually get them to all log in and sign off. Please keep it simple. If the president elect designates somebody else to be the primary contact, and um, enter the grant information, please give that individual the authority to sign off on it as well and just keep this process um, simple. That, that's a strong recommendation to do that. Um, and then while the signatures are being waited for, the project status is submitted. And at that point, changes can no longer be made. Um, um, to the project. If changes need to be made, then, then the, the project um, status needs to roll back, which is easy enough to do. Um, starting the signature process will automatically start making entries into the history log that we looked at a few minutes ago and notify um, uh, all the project signatories by email with instructions on how to sign the project. And I recommend just one signatory, which would be the primary contact. So um, once everybody has signed off on it, the status is changed to signed. And that means um, the district grants committee is ready to review it. And it automatically generates an email notifying us, you know, that is signed. And we go in and we look at it and we review it. Um, okay, so those are the... Um, that those are the basic instructions. I am going to stop sharing. And I know there were some questions. I'm going to take a look at the questions. This question, do we need to know the date for the project slash event? Um, it, if it's a particular date, not not necessarily. Um, it just you know it just has to fall within the new rotary year, and you want to have some idea, um, so you know when you think your project will be finished. But but you don't need to know exactly um, a, a particular date for the for the project or event. If if that's not a specific enough answer, um, you know you can. Um, maybe give us some more details about the project and make sure. Okay, our project date is dependent on the village paving a road. Well, um, that's okay as long as it will be done by May 31st of 2022. If you are concerned about that, then it may not be a good project to pick. Um, but as long as it falls within that time frame and you're able to spend the funds in that time frame, that's fine. And for a district grant, a project is complete when the funds are spent. Technically, you know, um, you don't have to wait till 
the, the actual final implementation. It's really about having the proof of payment. So uh, again, you'll have to use your, your judgment on that. We've seen a project, um, a construction project, um, Orland Park had done at District Grant a couple of years ago that ended up just having to be changed to something else. It was dependent on the village um, doing something within a certain time frame, and the situation changed and they um, just, just simply couldn't do it um, and had to change the project to, to something else. But um, that is your a judgment call there. I don't see any other new questions. It is um, 7.14. I'm going to go in and uh, just do a demonstration and try to do that. Go to the website here. So this is the matchinggrants.org um, website landing page. I'm going to enter under district grants. I'm going to put in my credentials and log in. So um, these are currently um, projects that, that we see in the district grant system for our district. I'm going to um, just pull up a project here that is re uh, reported. Let's see here. Um, this is a, a project uh, from the Rotor Club Aurora Sunrise. The, the project has been reported. And um, you can see the um, final report was uploaded. There are no photos. You can see a history log um, for, the, for the project. I can go into administration mode and I can um, click on any tab. I'm not going to do anything um, to it. But if for some reason, so if our stewardship team comes back and says, oh, it's, you know, the everything looks good, I would then go and hit close and it would close out the project and would change the project to complete it. That, that's something I, I'm able to do is um, the district um, uh, committee for, for, the, for district grants. If there was something else needed to be done, documents needed to be added, I would hit revert to paid and we'd be able to go back and um, upload documents um, to it. So when you upload documents um, to a file, or to a project, um, and when you, when you land, it, it looks like this, so you're in the project mode. You wanna upload documents. Um, actually, I'm gonna to go to a different project. To go to one that's paid. And I, I wanna upload the final report. I would go into administration mode. I'd come to the description tab. Um, I would click here to download a blank final report form. It would download it to my computer. It's the um, final report template. It's a Word doc. It's pretty easy to complete. I would complete that. I would save it as a PDF. I come back over here under the documents tab and I you know, choose that file on my computer, upload it and um, it would save automatically. And, and the same for any photos, it allows you to um, choose files and photos to, to upload. If I, and when it changes status, it automatically generates an email and it goes to everyone associated with the project. If for some reason I wanted to just put in a status update, something important, and manually generate an email, I would type in some text here and hit, you know, save history, um, send email, and an email would, would go out. So those are um, just uh, how, how to maneuver around in an existing um, project. But again, to, to submit a project, to start a new one, this is what, where we go. Um, this is the current year, which you're not going to do. You'd be doing 21, 22, and you'd fill in this, this information, um, save it. I'm, I'm not going to um, 
save it, save a fake project, um, but you would save it and then it would start going through the paces, uh, the different phases. I am going to cancel that. Um, we don't have any currently that are, uh, actually we do have one here that's in the proposed phase. We can take a look at that. It's been entered and it's, it's awaiting review. Um, so the, the district, um, we would look at that, you know, we're, we're looking at this project and when we're satisfied with it, we would hit publish and it would start to go through the, the, the project phases. So um, we're just in the time of the year where most of the projects are already um, paid or reported. So it is um, pretty easy to navigate around and um, you know go, go through the different tabs on the project, um, go into the administration mode, add things, do things, um, edit the project page. Since this project has already been submitted for signature, only some fields can be edited. So sometimes there'll be an addendum to the project, something you want to add to the description, a note to capture, and you can just enter that, you know, right here and um, save it. But we're not going to do that. So I am going to um, stop sharing for the moment. I'm going to check the Q&A. I don't see any new questions. I'm going to um, look at participants and just, just ask if anybody has any questions. Um, if you do or you, you want to um, unmute, just hit the raise your hand um, icon and I can unmute you to, to ask a question or put it into the chat. I'm, I'm sorry, or into the Q&A. I'll give you a moment to um, just, just think about that. Okay. I don't see any questions um, popping up from anybody. So um, hopefully we did answer your questions tonight. I, I did uh, make a note that Deborah did not receive the application. Um, so I will um, resend that to the email that you provided, um, Deborah, and, and get that off to you. Um, otherwise, I really appreciate you joining us this evening. Uh, again, the presentation slides are on the, um, the district website. Uh, let me... Um, on the grants page. Let me just share screen for a moment. Let's see if we can find those. I'm going to log off of matchinggrants.org. Go over to the district website where I am logged in. Under foundation, there's the grants committee page. And the um, if you scroll down you'll see that the um, district grant application instructions is the PowerPoint I was showing tonight. And if you click that link, it'll download the slides to your computer or ask if you wanna view them. So that, that's all there, but we, all, we will have a follow-up email and um, send those out as well. I see there is a question. Um, John Anderson, uh, if a project cost is estimated to cost $10,000 and the local member commit 5,000, what will the district commit? Um, the, the district grant allocations are determined by what clubs donated to the annual fund three years ago and it, it can't be changed. So that, that's what the district will commit. And in fact, I, I do wanna screen share one last thing um, which are the district grant allocations. If you attended PATS, um, this data was in your, was in the um, 
the pets manual from the district. And in, in fact, and I don't mean to pick on anyone or anything, um, the total amount that the district donated to the annual fund three years ago was $263,254. Half of that comes back to the district as DDF. Half of that, or $65,813, is available for the district grants program. And again, that's allocated based on what the what the clubs gave. Um, so we'll just we'll just pick Aurora because they're at the top of the list. So their allocation is one thousand six hundred and fifty five dollars. So their president elect Nick um, received an email um, from Sue Lynn, our district grants coordinator, informing him of that exact amount. So that, that is what's available from the district um, for that uh, to answer um, Johnny Anderson's question. And if anybody has any you know, questions about their allocation, um, can't find the email, you know, always you know, co come back to us and we can um, make this information available. It is also posted on the district grants um, website I mean, on, on the, the district website on, under the grants page, these, these allocations are also posted there, but we'll certainly make that information available. I see there's some new um, comments in the chat, just checking for any questions, don't see any. Check the Q&A one more time. And um, it looks like we've answered all, all of the questions that you've posed. But um, you know, please um, certainly, if you 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 have any as you're preparing your your grants, um, please do reach out to us. Um, otherwise, I just thank you for for joining us this evening. Take care. I'm going to stop the recording and uh, end our meeting. Thank you.